Hi everyone, this is Jake from Associated Environmental Systems. In this video, we're going to focus on the HM436 Maser Chamber. We'll provide an overview of the chamber, demonstrate how to install the chamber, and cover basic operating procedures. The HM436 was designed to house the Symmetricom MHM2010 Active Hydrogen Maser. This chamber has an internal working volume of 36 cubic feet and it can accurately control both temperature and humidity at optimal conditions for maser operation. These conditions are 23 degrees C, plus or minus 2 degrees C, with a steady state relative humidity of 35%. Temperature stability is 1 tenth of degree C at sensor after stabilization and the humidity stability is plus or minus 5% RH at the sensor. Now let's take a look at the outside of the HM436 and we'll demonstrate how to connect the chamber to water and electricity. Let's start with the water connection, which is located on the right outer wall of the chamber. The chamber is fitted with a quarter inch poly tube connector. The water supply must be single distilled or demineralized and must be regulated to no more than 30 psi. If your facility does not have a distilled water supply, a demineralizer system is required. The demineralizer system cleans the water supply and should be placed in line between the water source and the HM436 chamber. Demineralizer systems can be purchased through your AES sales rep. Note: Do not use laboratory DI water. Now let's move on to the drains. There are three independent drainage lines protruding from the right wall of the chamber. There's also a humidity drain valve which controls flow to the humidity drain. The first drain is an overflow for the humidity flow valve assembly and requires a 3 8 poly tube connection. The second drain is used to drain the water from the system and is controlled by the valve we talked about before. It requires a quarter inch poly tube connection. The third copper drain outlet is for the internal drip tray. Once you've hooked the chamber up to water and drainage, you can move on to your electrical connection. The power cable is located on the outer right wall of the chamber. Your chamber will require either 208 volt single phase 60 hertz or 220 volt single phase 50 hertz depending on your location or electrical specification. You can verify your chamber's electrical requirement by checking the serial tag which is located on the outer left wall of the chamber. The plug itself is a twist lock type L615P. The inside of the HM436 is equipped with two 115 volt 15 amp outlets. Customers are responsible for supplying separate power for these outlets, which can be used as a redundant power source for the maser itself or for any other electrical equipment housed inside the chamber. Finally, there is a 3 inch access port on the right wall of the chamber. This can be used to pass additional connections through. A port plug is supplied and should be installed if the port is not in use. Now let's open the doors and take a look inside. The inside of the chamber is 33 inches wide, 37 inches deep, and 50 inches tall. Inside the chamber you'll find the light, the port, and the electrical outlets. These outlets connect to the 115 volt, 15 amp power connections that I described earlier in the video. The baffle circulates conditioned air from the bottom left of the chamber. The threshold is designed to fit a removable ramp for easy maser loading. Contact your AES service rep to learn more about this option. There's a full height door on the back of the chamber which can be used to service the maser during operation. The service light is activated when this door is open for easy maser maintenance. Let's wrap this video up by talking about the control panel and explaining how it's used to operate the chamber. The control panel consists of three controllers, temperature, humidity, and an over temp failsafe. There's also three buttons, power, cool, and light. The temperature controller is a watt low PM, which consists of a large digital display and five selectable buttons. The display has two numerical readouts. The larger red readout displays the process value, or actual temperature in the chamber. The smaller green readout displays the temperature set point. The button functions are as follows. The red button is for navigating back to the home menu. 
The infinity button toggles through the setup options. The green button accepts or selects the setup option. The arrows adjust set point up or down. The chamber and controller come factory calibrated and should not need adjustment. AES highly recommends leaving all settings as they are. The humidity controller is also a watt low PM and all the buttons function the same as the temperature controller. On the right side of the chamber you'll find an RS-232 interface. You can use this interface to communicate with the temperature and humidity controllers. Data logging can be accomplished by using the WattView software package. The WattView software package is sold by AAS and is available as an option with this chamber. The over-temperature failsafe is made by Dwyer Electronics. Its job is to protect the chamber from overshooting temperature. It will shut off the chamber if the internal temperature exceeds the failsafe set point. This controller comes factory calibrated and should not be reprogrammed without support from AAS. The controller consists of a large digital display which reads the process temperature in the chamber and four selectable buttons. The button functions are as follows. The set button selects a menu value. The blank button is only used by the factory and has no function at all. The arrows toggle the controller set point. Again, this controller comes factory calibrated and should not be reprogrammed without support from AES. The buttons on the control panel are used to operate the chamber. The first button is the power button and turns the chamber on or off. The second button is the cool button and it activates the chamber refrigeration. The third button is the light, which is used to toggle the light on or off. Once you've connected the chamber to water, drainage, and electricity, Simply press the power button to turn the chamber on and press the cool button to activate the refrigeration. The chamber controllers are programmed for optimal maser conditions, so all that's left to do is load the maser. This concludes our maser chamber video. If you have any questions about the HM436 or would like to learn more about AES environmental chambers, please feel free to contact us at the address below.